Hi everyone, welcome to video 1000 on my channel. Yes, I talk a lot, <laughs> which if you knew me in real life would be such a departure from what I normally am like. However, I am passionate about Bible study. I love studying the Bible. The Bible is my playground. I don't think that there is ever going to be um, a time where I feel like I've learned enough. I hope that time never comes. So for video 1000, I want to take us back to the very, very basic principle of salvation. And this is something that gets confused quite often where people try to even often unconsciously or subconsciously bring works into the equation. We're going to start in Matthew 7 with one of the probably well-known passages where Matthew 21. It says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. So this is the first point where we begin to understand a premise that will be built upon. Not everyone that professes Jesus will enter into the kingdom of heaven. Who will enter into the kingdom of heaven? He that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. So the purpose of this video is really going to help people understand what the will of the Father is that will get people into heaven. What doing the will of the Father is. This is, like I said, where people sometimes even subconsciously will try to add in works to salvation because it says, well, we have to do something. We have to do the will of the Father. Then they go back to the Old Testament because that's a natural thought progression of, well, where in the Bible does it say people had to do things? Well, the Old Testament. So maybe if we keep the law, that's what it's talking about. No, it is not. He says, many will say to me in that day, what day? Well, that's the second coming of Jesus Christ. When he comes to judge the quick and the dead, at his appearing in his kingdom. Many will say to him in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Well, where's the power? In the name of Christ. Not in the person doing the work, but in the name of Christ. And in thy name have cast out devils. And in thy name have done many wonderful works. Again, it's always about Jesus, never about us. It's never about what we do. It's always about glorifying him because the power of God resides in Christ. So perhaps doing the will of the Father is going to have nothing to do with us and everything to do with him. As is evidenced by the next verse, people saying, well, we did this, we did that. Wasn't that good enough? Well, never have our own works been good enough. That's the point. Because in that day, people who try to stand on their own works, well, I will profess unto them, Jesus, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. So we see something developing here where it talks about the only way to get into the kingdom is to do the will of the Father. It has nothing to do with anything that we ourselves have done that is insufficient. Because ultimately when we try to do it on our own apart from the will of the Father, Jesus is going to say that he never knew us. This is not a degrees of relationship conversation where you know, maybe Jesus is our neighbor down the street and we know he lives there and he knows we live where we do, but we've never actually spoken to one another. This is a, I never knew you. It's not about, well, I knew you once and then we went our separate ways and hey, we're being reunited. I never knew you. So let's go to John 14. Who does Jesus know? Who knows Jesus? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, ye should have also known my Father. And from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. So how do we get to know the Father and how does the Father know us? Through Jesus. So then what is the answer to this question? What is the will of the Father which is in heaven? Okay, well, this is answered by Jesus in John 6, but I want to take you to Ephesians 1 first. Because this talks about a process. 
Ephesians 1.13, in whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth. So hearing, in whom also after that ye believed doing, ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. When we go back to Matthew 7, real quick, the very next thing after this, where it talks about doing the will of the Father. There is a little parable. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, specifically what Paul wrote about in Ephesians 1, in whom also after that ye heard, ye believed. That's the hearing and doing. I will liken him unto a wise man. Wisdom is an attribute of the sevenfold spirit of God. The sevenfold spirit of God is the Holy Spirit. In case you are unaware of that, let's go to Isaiah 11, where it lists the seven attributes of the Holy Spirit, also called the seven lamps of burning fire, or the sevenfold spirit of God, seven spirits of God which are before the throne. The spirit of God shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom. It is the first attribute listed of the Holy Spirit, wisdom. So any time in the Bible you're hearing wise versus foolish, wise man, foolish man, building houses, wise virgins, foolish virgins, foolish not being, being excluded from an event. Wise is an attribute of the Spirit. So a wise person is going to have the Holy Spirit, i.e. is saved. Whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them. What is the hearing and the doing? The hearing is hearing the gospel of their salvation, and the doing is believing. So this answers the question, ultimately, what is the will of the Father? How do we do the will of the Father? Hearing and doing. Hearing the gospel and doing is believing. This is evidenced by, before we get to the, the wise men and the foolish men building their house, what is the will of the Father? which is in heaven. John 6. I always have to search for this verse. I should know it by now. This is after the feeding of the 5,000. When they found Jesus, they caught up to him. They were searching for him. He said, you're not searching for me. Uh, necessarily for the right reason, but because you saw the miracle. He says, Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for the meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him hath God the Father sealed. Yes, Jesus was sealed for ministry by the Spirit, just like we are sealed at the point of justification. Then they said unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? And Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that ye believe on him whom he hath sent. What is the will of the Father that gets people into heaven? What is the hearing and the doing? Hearing the gospel that saved and doing is believing. This is one of the things that people significantly complicate. The pure and simple gospel of salvation is hearing the word of God and believing on the word of God. In Matthew 7, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Who shall? The one who does the will of the Father which is in heaven. And what is the will of the Father? That ye believe on him who he hath sent. People say, well, our works, we did this, and we did that, and we did that, and Jesus says it doesn't matter. If he didn't know you, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Because the way in which God comes to know you is through relationship with his Son. If you have not believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, he does not know you. It does not matter what church affiliation you have or what you call yourself. It matters what God believes of you. And he does not know you if you have not believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and been saved. It literally matters not what you have been doing with your life in a works capacity if you have not believed on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and been saved. I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. The rain descended, the floods came, the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. 
who is the rock, the chief cornerstone, Jesus Christ, to whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious, ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house upon the rock, upon the sure foundation, which is Christ. The Bema, 1 Corinthians 3, this details the process of standing through the fire and be for reward. What does it say? According to the grace of God, verse 10, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, he preached the gospel, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereon. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Jesus is the foundation. He is the founding upon the rock. And you can do works, good or bad, that will be that will be built upon the foundation, separate and distinct over and above from the foundation, not part of the foundation. Some will stand through the fire, be for reward, some will be burned, but he himself shall be saved because you were founded upon the rock. Just like it says in Matthew 7, 25, the rain descended, the floods came, the winds blew, beat upon the house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. The inverse of that, every man that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not, which means does not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, shall be likened unto a foolish man. Well, yes, because they don't have the Spirit, wisdom being an attribute of the Spirit. And that house is built upon the sand. The rain descended, the floods came, the wind blew, and beat upon the house, and it fell. And great was the fall of it. And it came to pass when Jesus had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as having one authority and not as the scribes. And yes, who is the single authority? Jesus. The last place I want to take you to is James 1. Because the admonition is to... Uh, here. There we go. Verse 22, the admonition is, Be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. If we have a solid base for understanding before we get to James, this makes perfect sense. But if you think this is a works equation, then when you get to James 2, when it talks about faith without works being dead, you're going to get all messed up and think, Oh no, I still have to do things like works that aren't believing on the Lord Jesus Christ and being saved says, no, be ye doers of the word, believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, and not hearers only, those who heard it and did not do it, like the one who built his house upon the sand, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. Because the deceiving is of your own self, believing that you don't need Jesus. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass, for when he beholdeth himself and does his own thing, goes his own way, straight away forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty, which is the new covenant founded in Christ, and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer, believer on the Lord Jesus Christ, and being saved, this man shall be blessed in his deed. So I want to make simple this video 1000. What is the pure and simple gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? To be a hearer of the gospel and a doer of the gospel, which very specifically stated in John, let's just go back to John. We'll end here. John 6:29. What is a doer? of the word what is the will of the father that gets people into heaven that ye believe on him whom he hath sent this is like one of the most important verses in the bible that you could ever memorize and know the location of it gives you the very specific words of jesus christ who tell you what being a doer of the word is what the will of god that gets people into the kingdom this is the work of God. What do you need to do to be uh, to be qualified as a doer of the will of God, the work of God? 
John 6, 29. Believe on him whom he hath sent. Everything else is un an unnecessary complication when you are talking about salvation. Thank you all for being a part of my channel. I all I appreciate every single one of you very, very much. Here's to video 1000. Have a great day.